may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God heals people, and sometimes he doesn't. We've probably all had experiences of asking God for help and not getting it. I went through a period where I felt unable to believe in God. I prayed fearfully that God would show up and help me believe, but for many years, he didn't. And then he did. I was lonely and in despair, and suddenly Christians were in my life, and then so was God. For a lot of years, God decided not to show up and make things better. I know what it's like to be healed and to spend a lot of time desperately needing healing and not knowing why I wasn't getting it. We're all in need of healing of one kind or another. Some healing happens all at once in one moment. Some of it is a slow journey and some of it will only know in eternal life. In our gospel passage today, we see Jesus heal some people and not others. It's easy when we're listening to his story to stay focused on what he does and where he's going. But there's also value in noticing what he doesn't do and what happens to the places he leaves behind. Over the course of one day, Jesus performs his first he healing miracles in Mark's gospel in the town of Capernaum. And once that day is over and a new one is beginning, he retreats to a quiet place just outside town to pray. His disciples chase him down and tell him that people are wondering where he is in need of his healing power. Jesus rejects that request to keep healing people. One day, that town knows very concretely the healing power of God, and the next day, he's gone without explanation. He's not looking at Capernaum and judging the remaining people in need of healing as having insufficient virtue. He loves them. The people of Capernaum can't pull him back by praying harder. Jesus doesn't ask his followers to gather intel about where the best people are so that he can go help them. He just has a mission elsewhere. He's on the move. And so we learn two things about healing from this story. One is that God has the power to intervene in this world and heal us tangibly and physically. The other is that sometimes he does it and sometimes he does not. This season of Epiphany is a time when we celebrate God revealing himself to us in Jesus. And this story offers a pattern that we can use to see that revelation in our world today. Sometimes miracles of healing happen and sometimes they don't. And that's a really difficult tension to hold. We can believe in miracles without believing their absence means an absence of God's love. We can also believe that our world is complex without letting go of faith in God's power. I think Episcopalians often feel like believing in miracles is embarrassing. We're educated and nuanced, and we take science seriously. If you see yourself in that, and I certainly see myself in that, then I challenge you to take seriously 
the power of God and of the spiritual realm. The mind, body, and spirit of each individual people are interconnected in ways that we only kind of understand. And the gospel's stories about Jesus healing people are not fiction. But if you've ever prayed for healing for yourself or someone else and not gotten it, that raises a lot of difficult questions. Is God not really there? Is he there, but there's something wrong with me? So he's not listening? At these times, stories about Jesus healing people can seem insulting or depressing. It must have been nice to be in Capernaum that day, but where's God when I need him? In truth, there's no one-to-one -one correspondence between prayer and healing, where real prayer by a faithful Christian results in healing and a lack of healing would mean that there's a defect in someone. Churches that promote this kind of simplistic thinking are forming people in brittle faith. They often crack when they have to deal with real life. We all suffer and watch people we love suffer. And that doesn't mean we're beyond the reach of God's love. We don't always get to know why things happen the way they do, but we can trust that God will use whatever happens for our ultimate good. When our prayers don't seem to be answered, we might focus on picturing not Jesus's healing ministry in the countryside, but his suffering on the cross. His prayers there are not answered. He's right there with us in the pain, and new life will follow death. Every week during the prayers of the people, we pray for those in our community who are in need of healing. I think this is a good time to practice how we approach God around the topic. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a hard time focusing on the prayers. The names really fly by. I hear the list of people and process it mentally like a series of objects coming to mind. It's a reminder of their different needs, but I wonder what it would be like to instead let the names wash over us and focus on how we are orienting ourselves to God. We can be asking God to be present, to act on behalf of those he loves, and to reveal his healing power in our community. We can hope that healing will be literal will be known in the ways that we ask for. But if it isn't, we can ask for peace which passes understanding. That peace isn't the satisfaction of a good outcome. It's the mysterious knowledge that all will be well. No sin or suffering can separate us from the love of God, and we are all on our way home. Amen.